Okay, with vacancies rising, rents falling, and fundamentals deteriorating, do you want to avoid commercial real estate investment trusts, or is this the time to snap up some at a bargain price? Well, where do you look? Let's find out. We've got an expert, Paul Adornato, senior analyst at BMO Capital Markets. He joins us. Paul, good to have you back. Thanks, Thanks for coming in. Thank you. Um, be before we get to sort of the state of the market right now, I know that you've got a big conference coming up. Just use that as sure. a barometer for the health of the market, because you're telling me that there are a lot of people scheduled to attend. This is the North Absolutely. American Real Estate Conference Absolutely. in Chicago. When is it? Yes, it takes place September 9th to 11th in Chicago. Uh, this is the sixth year that my partner and I have run this conference, and this is uh, the, the most attendance that we've had on both the, uh, the company side, the presenting companies, the REITs, as well as the institutional investors. So record attendance. The REITs really want to get out there and tell their story. And obviously, with all of the uh, uh, headlines uh, about commercial real estate, investors are eager to, uh, to hear uh, about the details. All right. So really, it seems almost an anomaly, right? I mean, record attendance at a time when commercial real estate is under such deteriorating right. uh, uh, metrics. Um, uh, talk a little bit about the uh, the publicly traded real estate mm -hmm. investment trust, the commercial right. uh, real estate companies. They've done what? Issued stock, gone yes. into joint ventures. What have they done to help themselves? Right. Uh, uh, I, I guess uh, first to back up, um, we still see the fundamentals deteriorating throughout the commercial real estate sector. So uh, the backdrop that we're talking about is still one of uh, rising vacancy and falling rents. Um, but the REITs have been, the publicly traded REITs have been successful in issuing equity this year, about uh, $20 billion uh, so far. They've also um, have recycled capital by forming joint ventures with other institutional investors. Uh, they've also issued uh, corporate unsecured debt. That market was really closed for many months, but has now come back to life. And they've also been able to issue uh, secured debt, traditional mortgage debt, which, although it's more expensive than it has been, it's still available from uh, the stronger banks. So everyone's kind of like, what, pouring concrete around their balance sheets, right? Trying to <laughs> exactly. shore up the balance sheet of the company. A good way to put it, yes. <laughs> All right. So if that's the case, uh, give us sort of the, the, the fundamental look at why some REITs might actually do well in an environment mm -hmm. like this. Absolutely. Well, if you consider that uh, the publicly traded REITs only own about 10 to 15 percent of all of the commercial real estate in the country, you could, st you could see that it's still a, a very, very highly fragmented market. So the REITs that we're talking about, these players are generally, as we mentioned, uh, very well capitalized. And so we think that when distressed sellers uh, that are not able to f refinance their properties, primarily from the, the private side, private developers, etc., uh, we think that the public REITs will have the wherewithal to go in and buy some properties at very attractive prices. Okay, so someone's going to win as someone else loses. Hopefully. <laughs> All right, well, talk about one of the REITs. Uh, this is a Camden Property Trust. They're in some of the worst markets we've right. ever heard of. Right? I mean, they're in Las Vegas, for example. Right. Uh, we, we like Camden Property Trust uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one, we think the management team is, is extremely uh, well-skilled and able to navigate these markets. Uh, second, we think that those markets that you mentioned, Las Vegas, Phoenix, Texas, uh, they were the first to fall and have fallen the hardest in terms of the single-family market. We also think that when growth returns to the economy, that those high-growth markets will once again, you know, take their place as uh, growth uh, nodes within the country. So we think that the worst is behind uh, the, the, those, those particular markets, and the company is well positioned. All right. Now, for a company like a Camden uh, Property Trust, is, is there any thought, though, that uh, the difference between the price that a seller wants for a property and the price that a Camden Property Trust would want to buy, that that difference is going to stay pretty big for a long time, because everyone's kind of waiting right. to see whether there's going to be additional financing or indeed right. whether the economy is going to generally turn around. Exactly, exactly. And so all of this acquisition activity that we've uh, alluded to has not really started yet. So it's really something that we expect to happen probably, you know, next year, uh, you know, uh, at least by the middle to end of, of next year. So right now, uh, buyers and sellers have not really uh, agreed on a, on a price. And so we haven't seen a lot of real estate transactions on the commercial side. All right. Talk about another REIT, uh, another one you've been looking at. This is Duke Realty. Duke Realty. This is a balance sheet story as well. Yeah, absolutely. Duke um, had gotten themselves into trouble uh, by being uh, a little bit uh, over levered. And also they were involved in merchant building. And so that is developing with the intent to sell to, to third parties. 
And of course, so uh, they didn't the have all story. the leases already in place. They were going to sell them on once the thing was built. Right. Uh, to, to, to some extent, uh, that's that's what they were hoping for. So, but they've worked through uh, a lot of those issues, and so their development pipeline is right now 89% uh, pre-leased. So that's that's pretty good. They've also been successful in raising equity. They issued corporate unsecured debt um, and have a, an active capital recycling program. So the balance sheet in this case has made uh, tremendous strides in the last three quarters. Um, we also like the fact that they're exposed to industrial properties. These are basically generic warehouses. Um, and although you know we're still seeing contraction in that market, like we've said, um, we think that industrial will be the f you know among the fastest to recover when the economy uh, turns around. So, so that would be what opposed to something like an office uh, right. office properties. Right. Is office properties that's more that's more connected it's, to what's in the job market? A ab absolutely, job growth generally lags the recovery. Uh, you know, companies are still probably in, in a net. Uh, uh, you know, uh, firing mode, and they're not really hiring uh, at, at this point. We, we still don't see that in the jobs numbers. In addition, um, office leases and uh, especially downtown offices have a very long um, uh, 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 cycle to them, and so it takes longer for them to recover. All right. I want to thank you very much, uh, Paul Adonato, Senior Analyst at BMO Capital Markets. Also, very good luck with your, the upcoming uh, North American Real Estate Conference that's taking place in Chicago September the 9th. Yes, exactly. All right. Nice to the 11th. Thanks very much. Thank you very much.